we're talking about the growth of NA. You know, I have a personal experience there. I was a senior uh, professional in the D.C. area many, many years ago in the early 80s. And I'm thankful to our predecessors who helped start and carry the message to the Attica Steel Surfers. I had no idea where to go back in 1984 when I found Narcotics Anonymous. And, and um, you know, there were people who had paved, paved the way. So I'm not a predecessor in that respect because NA was already established. And our next segment, we're going to talk about the growth of NA in our nation's capital. Uh, uh, specifically, this time, we're going to talk about Karma Leader W, as told by Reggie W and Lydia P. And um, so I want to bring these people in so we can get some perspective from uh, from, from both Reggie W and, and Lydia. Lydia, as, I, as I'm told, was uh, one of the original sponsors of Karma Leader. And uh, I want to thank you, Reggie, for, 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 for the conversation that we've had and the person that people that we have in common that found you so that you can come tell us about some of that history. So I want to turn it over to Reggie and Lilia and um, let's have at it. Thank you. So you want me first or Lilia, Lilia first? Let you all decide that. It's your, it's your, it's your time. Okay, Lilia, do good. Go ahead, Lilia. You got it, babe. Okay, let me grab it because she's going to get to me later. My name is Reggie and I'm an addict. I'm a grateful, 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 grateful recovering addict. And I know it's only before the grace of my high power that I'm here. Uh, and I was telling Lynn this, I'm 72 years old. You know, um, whew. I just want to say, I think Marla said the tears, she teared up. And when when, when Bernie and Marla had me going with that comedy routine, I, I love that between your, you know, and that's good, man. That's that's what keeps me going, healthy stuff like that to laugh, and I laugh at. But, um, you know, I was sitting here, man, and I was listening to you all, and I said, man, it's, it's, I don't believe I'm part of this. I just don't believe I'm part of this because when I got in, to the Narcotics Anonymous, I was 12 step in here. And um, man, in 1980, I, I was 12 step in here. And some of the things you all were sharing, man, I'm sitting here in tears are running. I put it on my eye drops, but the, but the tears are running down my face because I'm so grateful to be here. And, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about and some people don't know, but keep coming back, you will know. Because the gratitude just, sometimes I'll drive and it just hits me. Like, oh my God. Especially when people die and I'm like, oh my God. Why me? Not a bad me. But, you know, um, I was sitting here and I was listening to people and I was thinking about Carmelita. I was thinking about Narcotics Anonymous and, and Bob and, you know, um, you know, I've been put out of a lot of treatment programs. I was, a, I was, I turned into a hardcore heroin user. You're welcome. Uh, I was a hardcore heroin user and I didn't know, I didn't even think, I started off snorting it. And I never thought I would get to that level in my life where I would end up, in, in, you know, I mean, the jails, institutions, the overdosing, the being shot at. And, to try to get step, I can step outside of me one day to get air, and they pistol whip me and try to get me in the car in, in broad daylight. And y'all crazy people in NA took me to a meeting and said, We're gonna get them, we're gonna get them, we're gonna meet up with everybody else. And I went to they took me to this meeting, I got knots all over my head. And um, that was a week after I had gotten in the narcotics anonymous, after I started coming. And all I know is the next thing, some more people came in. They're like, damn, what happened to him? And, and, and lo and behold, they end up making me a, they end up making me like a cleanup, a janitor. You know, man, well, we're going to get together and going to get them. And they had me mopping the floors, sweeping the floors, picking up the ashtrays, putting up the chairs. And people said, damn, you did a good job. And I said, that was the first, my self-esteem, the first thing I ever felt like being something and here i am with no teeth and abscesses all over my body and 
you know, stunk real bad. And, and, and it just made me, and somebody put the arms around me. But, you know, I want to say that I, I, I met, I want to get back to Kamalita, and I'm I too, I heard somebody say they were, you know, they just getting unwound. I think it might have been Jackie, but I met Kamalita, and, and Kamalita, the Big Dipper, is what we called her here in D.C. And I'm so glad for Narcotics Anonymous in Washington, D.C., because we didn't have but like five or six meetings. We had one daily, five or six meetings, and we would see the same people in them, but we were glad to see each other. And I came in so damn psychotic and dealing with psychosis and other mental health stuff. I'm just going because I didn't know I had nowhere else to go. And I remember when Kamalita, somebody told me to go down to get on methadone in 1973 and that's of those biscuits they were passing out back then you know and like pop rocks and people told me to um Kamalita didn't like me she didn't like me when she met me in 1973 and when I got to uh, uh, uh when I got to be at a methadone clinic they tried to make Kamalita my counselor and I was not letting Kamalita be my counselor hell no she even locked the door on me one day. She watched me run up there late. And when I got to the door with the reach, she said, click. So I kicked the door in and broke it and everything. You know, it's just all kind of madness. But, you know, I've been to a lot of treatment programs and put out of them. I didn't want to stay. And for some reason, when I, I was 12 steps to Narcotics Anonymous, and, and I saw a couple of people I knew, um, who had been in the streets and, and they were doing exceptionally well. They looked better and, and Carmelita looked better. And, and, you know, I still didn't like her. She didn't like me. That was okay. That was good. But one thing I still know till this day, you don't have to like me in order to help me in Narcotics Anonymous. And a lot of those things that she shared helped me tremendously. And, um, you know, she had a, she, to come leader went got a job at a, the VA hospital, a program called the Vanada program, VA Narcotic Alcohol, Alcohol Treatment Administration. I might be wrong. And uh, come leader would have these these uh, groups, these groups of guys, you know, they and, and they're fussing and cussing like Marla said. They cussing out, and they got to the level they start coming out and coming to the NA meetings and. Uh, I was the object of their desire in the meetings because I was in a wheelchair. They were talking about cutting my leg off. And those guys would wear me out, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't let them know that. I would cuss them out and tell comp leader, don't bring these motherfuckers down here. They can't handle me. All kind of crazy stuff. And the sad part about it is a lot of those guys that, um, that had gotten to me like that, uh, a lot of them ended up going back out of, the, out of this program. They went to other fellowships, they went to church. Um, you know, you don't need this, let's go to church. And, um, you know, she still had to help me. And it got to the point where we had, I liked our meetings, because like I said, I had nowhere else to go. I liked our meetings, but it was still that, it, they were, and I'm glad that people were in the meeting when I got there, and that was Carmelita, and Doreen, all the people, and those people, you know, a guy named Anthony, a little little guy, you know, but it was a lot. It was a lot of people in there that 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 surrounded me and helped me out. They really helped me because I was I was gonna go back out. And back then, they used to talk to you real dirty in in Narcotics Anonymous. Now, they would tell you sit your ass down and shut the fuck up. You know, you ain't got shit. We, we got AA's book and Hazleton books. We got, I think Marla said it, we got all kinds of literature, but it wasn't NA. It was not Narcotics Anonymous. And they would talk to you greasy and cruddy, and, but it would make me mad enough to sit in that room. And um, we had a lot of people, you know, we kept saying, we, and we were growing, to be honest with you. We had, we used to sing in the meetings to keep these other from going out. We mm, we would sing. We would put on a little small talent show. We would go out to eat. Anything to keep somebody from going out of that room. We would cry with you. 
We'd go to a funeral with you, you know, and they did all that for me. And lo and behold, um, we would say we were Narcotics Anonymous. We had meetings in methadone clinics and just all types of places. And, you know, some people now, I could tell the younger people, they're like, yeah, I heard y'all used to sing in the meetings. Yeah, we used to sing in the meetings because that's what, that's what it took to keep us in that room. And then we would hug and cry with each other afterward. And um, I'm glad I was part of that because I wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't have stayed here. And, um, you know, we started and then we got to, I think, y'all got to stick with me on my memory. I had a couple strokes and a couple of everything else, but Bernie said he can remember everything. I can't even remember the color draws I put on this morning. So y'all have to stick with me for a while. But we had, um, you know, uh, we did have these two white guys used to come, Jimmy Z, and y'all know him, Jimmy Z, Bubba, as I used to call him. Um, Fast Eddie, and all these guys, Jimmy's still around. Jimmy's one of the only ones still around that would help try to start Narcotics Anonymous. We had a lot of people going to the famous mental institution in Southeast, St. Elizabeth Mental Hospital. And um, a lot of the guys who came in, they didn't have a drug program over there at one time. So a lot of the guys who came in had to go to an alcohol treatment program over there. And some of those guys came back, and they were drug addicts. And some of those guys that came out didn't, there was no place, no place for them to go, so they went to AA. And so when we came around, they started kind of pulling on us, telling them, sharing their experience with us. But we would have, um, we got to the point we would start going out to other meetings. Like we would go to Baltimore. We would get with them. Ooh, that was a long time ago. We would get with the guys and the, and the ladies in Baltimore. We would go over to Baltimore and we sit there and we would just have a fellowship and talk. We still had no literature, you all. So then I think uh, one of the guys here had gotten in touch with, um, with, um, I forgot. I'll get it. I'll get it in a minute. <laughs> anyway, it, it got in touch with one of the guys and they ended up um, sending some literature here. I remember the first basic text. It was uh, three. I think we had three or four of them. They're paperback books. And I still have my original basic text that we had gotten from them. And it's all, it looks like that NA sim symbol on the screen with all the different colors in it because I have markers on everything in the book. And um, next thing you know, like... Um, we have, we've had so much, we, we, we've had Jimmy, we've had Bob, we've had a lot of the guys come from the California area, other areas come in and, and bring us some literature and just kind of sit down with us and go over things. I remember being, I was on several committees, y'all. Now, if you ask me what they were, the hell if I can remember, I ain't lying. But, um, I enjoyed going and I enjoyed now what I really enjoyed going to was the institution meetings. And I'm talking about the prison meetings. And when somebody told me that Reggie, you're going to be the only basic text that somebody will have a chance to, to read or look at. And when, and I used to love going to the institution meetings all in Maryland, all in Lorton, you know, Virginia and the mental institutions, because people would say, man, that's not him. That's not him. I'm telling you, it looks like him. You know, and like, let's see how he acts, and then we'll know if it's him. So, you know, by then, narcotics and I'm start kicking in my ass, and I'd had to carry myself differently. And I would walk into these places and walk to the prisons, and the guys are like, Man, what happened to you? What, what, what are you doing? And I had to tell them about Narcotics Anonymous. And I remember when I came in, I used to have, uh, I used to tell everybody, I'd take my little basic text and Walk down the strip, the same strip I use drugs on, put the, on my arm and had my little book under there and walk down the strip. And so people say, oh, so why you, you look different? What's going on? I said, man, the Narcotics Anonymous, man, is saving my life. So Kamalita and Doreen said, called me one day and said, meet, meet us at the meeting. And I met him at the meeting. I said, what the hell are you doing going up on that strip? Get your ass in the meeting to save your own ass. And I remember they said, leave those people alone. Mind your damn business. Ain't nobody asked you to come out here. You know, and, and, and I lost a couple of books. People like stole them and threw them in the trash or whatever. You know, they didn't want to hear that. 
But anyway, the longer I stayed around, the more I started learning about what Narcotics Anonymous was about. Now, we used to have some people that came out of Rockville and Bethesda uh, that would come, white, especially white women, would come down to our meetings. I don't know what their motives were. But next thing you know, they had boyfriends in the fellowship, you know. And um, if we were to go to their meetings, we wouldn't get that kind of reception. Up in Montgomery County, we would not get that kind of reception from people. And I heard somebody say, I think it may have been Bernie, somebody, uh, you would kind of be separated. You would kind of sit. Nobody would tell you to go sit anywhere, but we can tell, you know. And um, so we sit and talk about D.C. and people would start talking about, well, I need to come to D.C. Once they heard us share, I think uh, Marla was saying when the guy got up on the chair and said, motherfucker, you motherfucker. That's the kind of stuff people wanted to hear. And they would come downtown. And next thing you know, we started having big mixed meetings. Um, they would stay for the parties. We would just have these parties and just keep people in the in, in. You know how the popular house on the block gave Kool-Aid and popsicles. Instead of being out there in the street, that's what they did in our meetings. But we did not have a lot of separation uh, initially. We had... We, we had power in our meetings. That's all I can say. We had black power in our meetings. And that's the truth. You know, and we started getting to go to, we started going to the, um, the institutions. I remember I got, um, I started finding out about institutions in different places. And I remember this guy, he was in Alaska and he was, he was locked up for life in Alaska. And there were no meetings there. And I remember sending him some NA literature up there, he said that's the only thing he has to keep him focused on something. You know, end up sending him a basic text. But I thought about, I look back now and I said, boy, that seems like a long time ago because everywhere I've been in the world, I have found Narcotics Anonymous. I may not understand all of it, but I found Narcotics Anonymous. Um, I went to Africa. My daughter lived in Africa. I went to in. I didn't understand a word they said. I've been to some redneck meetings. You know, I understood everything they said, but I just kind of laid low and, you know, they didn't separate me. I love the motorcycle guy meetings because, you know, one of the things that I found out for me that when you have a message of recovery and people who are about recovery, they will embrace you. They, but if you got a message of some bullshit and everything else, you know, you, people don't want to deal with that. And I've had some great experiences in going to meetings uh, and one or two others. But, you know, we have we put we put D.C. on the map. Our narcotics and none. Now we have so many meetings in Washington, D.C., so many. And Lily could probably tell you how many we just had. It's a meeting almost 24 hours a day. I do kind of miss some of those. But we have had. Nothing but success in Narcotics Anonymous. Another thing I learned, or I, I learned in here was, I came in as a heroin user. The next group came as crack users. The next group came in with that um, K2 stuff. You know, so everything, some people came in with free basin cocaine and, you know, and, and so everybody kind of got into their little groups, but all in all, we all were on about recovery but we still had some little separation in there, you know. Um, yeah, we couldn't, I remember being in the meeting, and I couldn't, I had my hand raised, and couldn't, what, they didn't call on me. So I just kind of, and I ain't make any amends, I didn't make amends. When they, they kept calling around me, they well, you drive a BMW, and I drive one, and he drives one, let's you all talk first. Well, you all have a swimming pool at your house, and your house, and your house, come on, you share. And I was like, oh, hell no. This is about me not using any drugs. And I rudely interrupted the meetings. And I'm like, I had my hand up to hell with y'all about some damn swimming pools and BMWs. This is what I'm doing now, you know. And when they saw the way I shared and how I shared, they wanted to find out about what kind of meetings was I going to. And they started coming to the narcotics and honest meetings where real level shit, because they used to tell us, share from where the pain comes from. Share from where the pain is. Don't share from your head. Share from where it hurts sometimes. 
And when people start saying that, they, 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 they separated themselves from us. You know, and, and, and honestly, that's the, way I, that's the way I like it now. That's why I love my wife. My wife plays no, she, she doesn't play games with me. I don't even want to hear it sometimes. She'll hit me like, bam, bam, bam. Sit your ass down at the table. I made this breakfast for you. Damn it. And you up there on the telephone. That kind of thing. And I love you too. You know, but it's just our, our program of Narcotics Anonymous. I'm so glad to have everybody on the screen. We just had, we got, we got a good foundation. We were taught early. We were taught early about Narcotics Anonymous, and those things that I was taught has kept me, they used to say, don't build your foundation on sand. Very simple things kept me in the program. Sometimes I can't get with all the literature. Sometimes I need to see them simple slogans to, to, to simplify my mind again, because my mind got all messed up from the street and from these strokes and everything else. I need you to tell me something real simple, and then I'm like, damn. I needed to hear that. I had mental health issues when I came in. And I guess that's why when a new person comes in, I kind of attracted to the new person with mental health issues. I can really identify with them. So I kind of embraced them. And I sponsored some guys who suffer from stuff like that. And we had, you know, they call me every day or we get on the phone, on, the, on Zoom or whatever. It's just helping me get back in society and helping them bring, get back in society and stay clean. And some of my guys are doing really well. Some of my sponsees, I remember getting in a big old fight with Kamalita about some of those women she was sponsoring that looked so good. You know, and she kind of threw her shit up. Like, Who the fuck are you talking to? I like that kind of stuff. That just made me excited, you know? And, um, I can't. I just can't say enough about Washington D.C. Now we have strong meetings there, and every place I've been, people say, "I sure wish we had those kind of meetings." But you do, you do have those kind of meetings, and you do have to stand up. For, I had to stand up for myself when I went to meetings. And people wouldn't call on me, and like we call on him in three weeks. I ain't coming back here no goddamn more. You know that kind of thing. But we have a very strong program, man, and people come from all over to come and visit us, man. You know, and I, well, since you all are talking, like, I want to come to some of the meetings you all go to. And, and I'm going to say this about Carmelita, and I'm going to let it go, because I'm probably rambling because I'm all, I'm all excited about being on here, really, man, to be honest. Because who would think I would be on here talking about pioneers? I couldn't even talk when I came in. Who would sit here and listen to some of the stuff you all, you know, you all do, man, and have done? And I'm getting here, man, and I, I see, I see nothing but friendly faces on here. You know, I, I didn't got, you know, I didn't, I didn't I have adopted two new people like Bernie and Marlo because they, they funny, they crazy as hell. I like Craig is crazy. I like all that, y'all. But I'm gonna tell you, our, our, our common leader used to say some things. And, and like I said, I didn't like her until the very end. And she and I sat down and cried. And when I say we used to play, sing spirituals and sing songs and do everything to keep us in that room because we didn't have any material, come lead us sing this song. And there wasn't a dry eye in the room. And it was about her gratitude. And her gratitude was, I'm not going to sing it, but the song goes, because of you, my life has had a start. Because of you, whatever, whatever, whatever. And said, because of you, the sun will shine. The moon and stars will be all mine forever and ever always. And the song just talks about the galaxy that we, can, we, we are part of right now and the dreams that we had that that makes we're clean and we can do anything we want. And every time some we see was singing that song, I'm like, oh, he should sing that damn song again. Cause I didn't want to cry. I didn't want to cry, y'all. But anyway, I, I hope somebody got something out of something I said because I I really appreciate y'all. Y'all did a lot for me and our meetings every week, Lynn and, and Craig and, and Marla and the rest of y'all. 
Cheryl, all y'all, y'all have just given me a place to just go on another day. Go on another day, you know. So thank you, man. I'm glad to be able to put something in input in there, Ron and, and, and Dave and Funny Craig. So thank you all so much, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie. Love you. Let's stay in touch. And we're going to move gotcha. on to Lilia P. Uh, word has it that uh, that commonly the sponsored Lilia. I want to say welcome to you, Lilia, and uh, uh, let's 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 hear from you. Thank yes, you. thank you, thank you. My name is Lilia, and I'm an addict. And I do need to make a uh, correction on that because she didn't sponsor me. She would not sponsor me. Uh -huh. I had asked her to sponsor me, but she turned me down. And she told me the very thing that she told me. She said, "I just need a, a good damn friend." You know, um, and so uh, as a result of that, we developed a, 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 a very good relationship, I would like to say. Uh, let me let me uh, before I go any further, let me first thank you guys for uh, giving me this opportunity. Um, I can uh, turn down a lot of things, but um, <clears throat> there's just something about. Some things that you just can't turn down. And when it comes to uh, not only Kamalita, but quite, a, you know, other people that uh, this fellowship, you know, when it comes down to trying to do something or speak about them or whatever the case may be, I just couldn't turn it down. You know, because when I when I look back over things, um, it's amazing. And I appreciate uh, uh, Reggie uh, bringing me in uh, with him. You know, um, but surely enough, when I got here, I didn't have a clue about what was going on. And um, I had came in before. I had been here before and I, I had left and went back out. And then, and I met Kamalita the very first time. And um, I went back out and stayed out for a few years. And, and then I came back again and she was still here. And I remember very clearly on that very first uh setting we were at the meeting and and I was shaking my leg was just trembling and I sat next to her and she just kind of reached over and put her hand on my on my knee to make it stop you know uh because I was one of those people that used to get up I, I was real fidgety I couldn't um you know stay uh, still and uh so um there was this guy uh Charles he told me, he said, you need to really get into her hip pocket. And uh, that's when I did ask her to uh, sponsor me. And uh, as I said, she, she told me, no, she said, um, you know, that she needed, needed a friend. And it started from there because she used to call me early in the morning. She would call me in the mornings and she'd say things like, good morning, sunshine. How are you? You know, um, and she was working. Of course, I wasn't. And uh, she would ask me to uh, meet her at the meeting. And I would go, she said, um, I was, she said, if I told her, I said, well, I don't have money to, to kind of get there and get back. She said, if you just get there, then I'll get you back. We'll, we'll get you back. And um, so what happened is that th that went on for, for quite a few years. You know, um, she would give me, she gave me a number to this line and you called in. And they give you like a word for the day. It'd be a spiritual word or something for the day. And they tell you to meet and they tell you to ponder on that and things of that nature. And um, we really, really, she became like a mother to me. Even though I was 32, I didn't know, I didn't have a relationship uh, with my mother. And, and there were a lot of things, you know, how you really think that you know something and you find out later on that you don't know it, you know. Um, but what happened, we developed, like, uh, to me, um, a daughter and mother relationship because she, she taught me a lot of things that, um, you know, and even being in recovery, a lot of things that she didn't do when she first came in. You know, um, and we would sit and we would talk and she would talk about the fellowship. She would talk about how much she loved it and, uh, you know, and the things that would happen. And, you know, even some of the misconceptions, because she always felt like or thought that people misunderstood her, 
you know, in a lot of areas. And, and like Reggie said, um, she was a little firm and, um, and stern in her talking to you, you know, and she would say things like, you got to get in those meetings and you got to listen. You got to talk about how you feel. And, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that. But at the same token, you know, they used to tell us all the time, even back then, um, that, you know, you don't bring a person down without being able to bring them back up. But she would explain to us, you know, that, you know, how, uh, or at least to me anyway, you know, that a lot of her mishaps and a lot of the things that she did not do when she first got clean, you know, and she said, because I want you to be able to have, you know, a very, uh, a better life, you know, which demonstrated to me the care that she had in her heart. And she was very fond of the women. She was very fond of the women. You know, um, she, uh, I think Reggie talked about it. She not, she not only had that group up at uh, Bernada, but she used to, she had started a couples group where she would work with uh, uh, the different couples um, and, the, and, and their marriages and, and things of that nature. And, you know, of course, people begin to start calling her to come and share and speak you know, from all over the world, you know, and uh, she said, well, and I said, oh, well, you know, I wanted to go, you know, she said, well, you got to start saving your money, you know, and, and, and that's what, um, you know, taught me, or well, that was the beginning point anyway, of me learning how to save, because I started saving my money and, and in order to be able to buy the uh, plane tickets to go with her to these different conventions and things that she uh, that she was uh, speaking at. And every time she went somewhere, if she learned something different, she would bring it back, you know, and she would bring it back to this area. And we had went out to California, I believe it was, and it was this uh, lady out there named Mona. Her name was Mona. She had a treatment center out there um, she was one of their uh, pioneers um, from there. And they had had a women's group. They had a, a big uh, a women's group. And when she went out there, she was like, oh, boy, we need to take this back to D.C., Lilia. And we came when we came back, you know, calmly to start putting in the footwork. And she got um, a lot of some of the women. She gathered up some some women and we had a meeting. And uh, we uh, formed this group called the Miracle of Women. And it was all about trying to empower the women here. You know, uh, Reggie said that, you know, we had not only strong meetings here, but, you know, we had strong women here. And we still have strong women here. We have some strong uh, uh, Black women here in, in, in our area, you know. Um, and as a result of that, um, there has been, on other occasions, a couple of other groups that's here, uh, or a couple of other people that's here that has kind of picked up and piggyback off of it. You know, um, we, 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 we wanted, we were actually trying to do a, um, you know, be able to connect between D.C., Baltimore, and Virginia. Um, with, you know, us being able to have like a, a convention. Now, I understand they do have something that's out now, the Circle of Sisters thing, but they, she wanted to take this thing to a whole nother level, level. But of course, she expired before then, you know. Um, and she would always talk about it and in spite of all of the struggles, because she had a lot of struggles with like her family you know, um, because they felt that she had invested a whole lot of time in in the fellowship more so than, you know, with 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 them, you know. And um, so she had to work through all of that. And in spite of all of those difficulties, it did not stop her from coming back. It didn't stop her from coming back. Uh, Doreen was her sponsor. I think they had like maybe nine months apart. Um that um and and she was real elated you know um she 
she used to speak so highly of Doreen and, and how much, you know, just having her not only as a sponsor, but even as, as her friend as well, you know, that, um, you know, it, it, it was her inspiration, you know, and she was the type of person that, uh, in my opinion, if I may, uh, that would go and help anybody if she could, you know, um, and uh, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what else I could really add on in spite of the fact of, uh, you know, I mean, it, as a result of what Reggie has said, because he, some of the things that I was going to talk about, he, he shared about, but um, I do know that um, she was a hell of a woman in her own way, you know, um, and the impact that she has had within our area, I don't think that none of the people that were uh, here when I got here, uh, and even those that came, at, well, I should say that came after her, would ever forget her. You know, when they talk about, you know, people living on even after death, you know, in, in, in my life, she would be, she's one of those people that is still alive because she has implanted so much in me, you know, to, to be able to help me to grow. You know, I didn't have a relationship with my, uh, with my, with my family, the way that I have it today, you know, um, but because of her and along, along with my sponsor and the guidance that I have with going through the, the, uh, the, the, the steps of the program, you know, um, I'm able to have more of a working relationship with them. You know, um, in fact, I have my mother living with me now, you know, and I believe that a lot of that came from just being a part of the Narcotics Anonymous program. You know, um, God has truly been work. She helped me be on the foundation on a more spiritual level, you know, um, I mean, it's, I mean, I can really go on and on and on and on, but I think I'm going to stop right there. So anyway, thanks for letting me share. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Reggie W. Um, amazing. Just absolutely amazing. And again, these are very intangible things about uh, Carmelita that, you know, we can't read. We can listen to her tapes. But just want to, on behalf of this audience, just thank you. And from Florida and Tom from Hawaii, you know, we've had, had, had presence from Chicagoland. Thank you so much, uh, Bernie and, and, and Marla. And, and <laughs> thank you, Jay, from, 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 um, from Portland, Oregon. So you can do this, too, in your community. We're just beginning this. You know, that's so much of our history that if we don't capture it now, when will we? This is a celebration of our diversity. Our diversity is our strength. And so for those of you who may have an ambition to, you know, we have brown people in our, in our, in our fellowship. We have Hispanic people in our fellowship. We have the LGBTQ uh, people in our fellowship that might want to talk about that history and stuff. And if you want to, that's the, that's the website, that's the email, get in touch with us. You know, but we we're gonna keep we're gonna keep kicking the can down the road on a, on black and African American pioneers. But let's keep doing this. This is important. We need to capture our history here. And so, thank you so much to the people who worked in the background. We have so many silent soldiers uh, uh, that that actually participated in today's forum. And and if those of you who are interested in what we're doing have suggestions and want to uh, encourage us to visit your communities where you might know some of our predecessors, some of our, our African-American pioneers, please communicate with us. Um, and I just, uh, just thank you for allowing me to participate.